Maybe I should unmute myself. That would help. So, hey, all everyone, welcome to a Mark D special stream uh, playing Star Trek Resurgence tonight. So, uh, just played a couple minutes of it, but uh, figured I'd give it uh, give it a shot. So, hail to everyone in the chat. So, hail to uh, Joseph Dredd and Brian Hepburn, and I'm sure we'll have some people rolling in. Fortunately, clobbering times couldn't uh, make a stream tonight. I've been waiting to do this game for. You know, stream this for a while. And there's always something going on. Hey, JT Kirk. So, uh, figured, uh, why not? You know, I'll stream this since I'm, uh, there's no clobbering times tonight and have fun for a couple, a couple hours. So, uh, uh, let me share my screen. And I played just like a couple minutes. So, I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, just restart the game because what I did was just like one, one quick mission wasn't wasn't much so hope i can get this to go full screen now it's getting kind of wonky when i go between between panels here we'll see check my settings you guys can give me some uh tech support i guess so uh oh of course before i did that i have to say i i, I clipped a few clips you know so uh from war games so here's here's one you know if we're gonna play a game right well the first one was kind of funny i forgot the quote in here where uh He's saying 41 is old, so... He wasn't very old. Well, he was pretty old. He was 41. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's old. <laughs> yes, I remember when this movie came out. Yeah, 41, that's old. I don't know what, what year was this. Uh, it was War Games, but... Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, 41, that's old. Yeah, I wish it was 41 again. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, what, what... Oh, 1983, okay, so... I was in high school then, yeah. So I was probably about that about that age. Yep. So uh, yeah, here's the here's the clip. I kind of mashed it together. So hopefully it's all right. Copyright should be copyright wise, but uh, here's that full clip. Shall we play a game? Oh, let's play global thermonuclear war. Fine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And uh, JT Kirk said, "Yeah, Star Trek Bridge Crew would be definitely fun to do. Uh, I don't know how technically proficient Clobbering Times is, but maybe we can get some of the gang together to play that because I think it's pretty cheap on Steam. Usually, you can get it for ten bucks when it goes on sale. Or um, so I do have that. And actually, I did get Starfield through. I have game, you know, Games Pass. Although there's a controversy over that game now, but that's the next game I was going to try. But uh, yeah, that'd be fun to get some of the some of the crew. Maybe I'll post that in the." Uh, in the the chat or i'll mention it next time on if anyone wants to uh wants to play that raquel i think i don't know how how old her computer is if she if her uh system can handle i think she has a mac but i don't know if it works on mac or not or can you do you know if you can do uh playstation i know clobber times is a place that ps4 i don't know if you can do it has to be all pc together or you can do console to uh pc that'd be interesting but uh yeah, that's one I've I've just you know one of those games I've just loaded up and looked at, but uh, never really uh, played. But yeah, that seems pretty intriguing. I guess you can play as the TOS uh, bridge too. I guess there's an add-on for TNG, uh, but uh, I that'd be fun. <laughs> God, that'd be amazing to be on that that bridge. So yeah, remind me in the chat, but I'll definitely ask next time. It'd be fun to get get a gang together. So let me. I could see share the screen. Let me know, guys, if this sounds okay or hopefully there's not going to be an echo. Whenever you share a game, let's say share system audio. And see, it keeps, whenever I go back and forth to the chat, it keeps dropping out of full screen. So let me see what my settings are here. Let's see, full screen. I guess I want to be full screen, right? I've got a pretty, well, I'll just do 1920.1080. And let's turn down the music. Oops music i don't know copyright stuff sometimes the music gets you so i'll put that way down sound effects down a little bit and i don't think we need uh well yeah let's put subtitles on that helps too if you can't hear what they're saying all right so let's do accept like this game tell a friend let's see choices let's see what's here oh dive deep in your choices i guess uh <laughs> Not sure what that means, but <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> hey, Gwagnar, how's it going? And Phantom Outsider. And JT Kirk is saying cross play for the game does appear to be pop, pop, uh, possible. That's um, Star Trek Bridge Crew. Let's see how it dropped back to 
that's a pain to drop back to let me see if I don't do full screen with we'll see what happens maybe I can just maximize it then let's see here what happens if I do that if I go go like that does that oh maybe that'll keep it from popping uh popping back and forth let's see I'll add that let's see if I do that let's see Yep, okay, that works. You get that little bar at the top, but we can live with that, right? It's a Star Trek game. Yeah, Phantom, unfortunately, no wild card Wednesday night. Clobber and Tom's couldn't, couldn't make it tonight, so uh, I'll never say that I'm ever filling in for him. No one could ever do that, but uh, I figured, what the heck, just uh, uh, been meaning to stream this, and every night I am, I'm about to. <laughs> I'm busier, it gets too late, so I figured, hey, what the heck, I want to play this for couple a uh, couple hours tonight yep so unfortunately no clobbering times but uh I'm sure we'll be back for the clubhouse uh clubhouse tomorrow night and uh tales of tomorrow and uh ufo um i've got a meeting tomorrow night so i, ho I hope i can do the live live view because or the live uh uh watch party uh but i've got a scout scouts are starting up again so i've got a meeting at six so hopefully i'll be home <laughs> hopefully it won't be too too late to get home home for that so let's see let me hi auto hide my taskbar let's do that taskbar settings uh automatically hide the taskbar let's see if that there we go so the game that'll look better there oh, hi hide hide i just told you to auto hide come on windows computer let's see here Let's see. You think I'm a fun? I was a computer guy, but let's see. Well, it's not too bad on the bottom, but let's see if I bring it up again. Toolbars. This is exciting streaming, I know, but yeah. <laughs> on oh, the Yankees one. Cool. <laughs> Taskbar settings. All right, well, it is automatically high. Okay, I guess maybe when I go to the... Oh, whatever. Let's see. Maybe it'll go away. And here's the credits, I guess, for the game. Star Trek Resurgence. So there's the main main people. Always give, give credit. Yep. I think the game looks pretty good. All right, so if we do play, let's see. Uh, let's do empty slots. I'll start over. So let's do this. See if I can remember how to play. <laughs> okay, so I guess the choices that we make will shape what happens in the game. Let me make my let's make this full screen too. Oh. Captain's log, star date five seven nine three one point four. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And I hope this music is not a problem, but streaming, but. Oh, let's see. Gonna... And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented. Iron well, I guess once I clicked onto the chat, guys, <laughs> so. I'll try to read the chat, but I guess if I go back to the other screen, it pauses. So I know I am, perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy, the nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. All 
as it looks Our graphics are pretty good is on route to the resolute jara rydeck i know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew Should have used the transporter. Oh, sorry, JT, about the... Uh, I have a pretty fast computer, a good graphics card, so... Hopefully it'll catch up, and I have one gigabit per second internet, so I'm <laughs> hoping it uh, speeds up. Let me know if it gets any better. Maybe because I was switching back and forth. Thanks. No problem. I, uh, I'm not great with flying. But these little shuttles are the worst. Okay. So I guess we have three choices here. One, two, or three. I'd go with three. It's I'd seen worse. Yep, that wasn't too bad, right? I mean, come on. Let's try that. Three. I, Stick around in Starfleet and you'll be sure to see worse than this. I have. And you're here to talk about it. In the flesh. That's good. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Chara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's um, half the officer... Miranda here, class. She become nice. when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy. She'll be the XO this ship needs right now. Now, what ship are we going to? I forget. I already played it. It was about a month ago. Are we getting to the Reliant, the Miranda class? Or are we going to Excelsior class? Let's see. I like the way this looks. Yep. Very nice. I always was a sucker for that Enterprise uh, B or the <laughs> Excelsior. So clearly set in the TNG universe, or time period, I should say, or thereabouts. We'll find out exactly. So how's the I guess you guys can hear the sound, I hope, and maybe the stuttering stops. So I'm only playing it at 1920 by 1080. Okay, check in at security. So WADS, this is a WADS game. Yeah, TNG, the scale was uh, way off because then when they made the, um, uh, uh, they had the uh, Enterprise D is much, much bigger than the, the original Enterprise. So, uh, yeah, the space doors <laughs> should have been much, uh, uh, Commander, <laughs> much tighter. <laughs> I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look well, like... Well, he's trying to show off. Tars 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. So... That's, should we knock him that. down? Okay, sorry about the stuttering. I'll check my settings in a second. But I, I guess that's stream. I probably should do something like this on the... On uh, OBS Studio, it might be better to stream next time. I'll do it. The only thing with OBS, you can't show the chat. But if if I go back and forth here, anyway, it seems like it it messes up uh, depending on what uh, screen I'm in. So uh, Fortnite doesn't do that actually. Fortnite streams really well. But uh, okay, let's see. Only top twenty. Knock him down. Very impressive. Simulations don't count. I'm gonna go with simulations don't count. JT Kirk said only top 20. I, I'm going to kind of build him up a little bit since he's a new guy. But, yeah, he deserves an only top 20, I guess. But let's see. Yeah, Lisa. Hey, Lisa, this is not Fortnite. Yeah. Simulations are great for training, but they're not quite the same <laughs> as the real thing. That's fair. I guess I'm about to find out. Yeah, I try to build him up a little bit. <laughs> Lieutenant. 
please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. I'll try to do. I'll try to go full screen on this again, and I can just read the chat. Welcome, I guess. Commander so. Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek. You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. Yeah, it was number one. Yeah. You you finished in what? Like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really. It, it's like an, an idiot. honor to meet you, Commander. <laughs> yeah, about to cry Sorry, a minute ago. This I, is Brian. I didn't yeah. realize before. I I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. So uh, let's, do, let's do that. The pleasure is mine, Ensign. Uh, Paul Calloway. <laughs> Good to meet you. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. <laughs> that was a pretty good scene. I like that. Yep. All right. Well, let's let's see if I can change the settings here. Let's see if I do settings. Let's go back to full screen. Let's see brightness. Mo I'll take motion blur off. Maybe I'll get rid of some of the stuttering. Let's see sound effects volume. Let's see modes. Let's see settings. Can I change the graphics here let's see i'll just do resume let's see if that motion blur does anything once i can s save it then uh good day commander oh can you talk to him you know no uh yeah i think i don't think that that's in here at all yeah jt yep looks like tng era thankfully If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermont is a Bullion, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Okay, blue skin, blue skin, pink skin, looking for the blue skin. She's got the drunk walk, yeah. <laughs> and what's that there? Examine information. Let's try that. Let's see. Starbase 128 has four docks. So, so far, pretty much like an adventure game. Let's see. What's what can I do here? Examine replicated meal. I'm sure that's not. Uh, I'll not replicate pizza myself there. a meal once I'm on board. No clam pizza. There we go. There's Excuse some of the blue skin. Me. Yeah, field sobriety test. Yeah. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydek. I'm Commander Jan Ermot, Operations Officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. I know conditions mm -hmm. are less than ideal at the moment. Let's well, just say it was fun, right? <laughs> It was Simply perfectly fine. Nice side no shuffle and walking. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship and all. Mm. To our little research vessel. What have you heard? Spare me the flattery of high expectations. How about? I'll do my best to live up to expectations. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you'll do just fine. And if I can help in any way, just let me know. <laughs> Rekirk or Riker says simply Steve. Yep. Brian says take me to the Chief Blue Meanie. <laughs> All right, let's see our ship. All right, so it's not the Miranda class. Um, I'm sure one of uh, some of the, the chat will know what the she may not look class like much is compared to the bigger ships. But as far as science vessels go, oh, I'm a science vessel, all right. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma, fighting for her life. It was an accident. The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. 
It was a planned test, but the war. I'm not sure, uh, Steve. Is that Commander? No, no, that's definitely not Commander Row. No, was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. I can't forget the. the I already forgot the name of the we character I'm playing. We higher <laughs> resonant frequency, but. And Dread. It was more than she could. Thinks handle. it's a Kira class. Yep. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all centaur responsible class. for each other. That's what it means to be a crew. How about I say that's a high price. It could have been worse. Let's say that's a high price. I'm saying to have lost so many lives. That's a high price to pay. Too high by any estimation. But there's nothing that can be done about it now except get back to work. And make Wagner. sure. Wagner. I hope it's the original again. universe, but I don't know yet. But listen. All right, I went with high guys. Yep. <laughs> you've known Captain Solana for quite some time. And so far, and we've I'm got classic trick. Best. But I should warn you that when the captain announced you would be the new first officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Well, let's try thanks for the heads up, I guess. Uh, one would work too, but I, I can earn their trust. I like that. How... Trust is earned. And it sounds like I have my work cut out for me. But I plan on winning them over. I don't doubt that. I just figured it was <laughs> better to know what you're walking into. Of yeah, course. Yeah, Blue is jealous. But isn't that... Uh, that's Star not Fleet command class, though, right? Priority mission to the Hotari In TNG, right? I'll let the captain is, he an engin is he engineering or... To see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock... I don't know if he's a barber, ready. yep. There's still so much to do. <laughs> That looks good. Now, let's see if I can get this darn thing uh, full screen again. Maybe if I save it. All right. Let's see. Oh, W. <laughs> Lift. Oh, that's heavy. Yep, red is command and TNG. Yep. Stuck. I got just the thing. And tomorrow's Tuesday. Everything will be ready for Tuesday. Yep. Find the plasma torch. Yep. Hyperspanner. That's got to be a coil spell. That's got to be the torch here. Sure. God, this mouse is slow. Let me speed this up. It's got... Sorry, guys. <laughs> Controls, modes, settings, Can't aim sensitivity. Can't change anything. Yeah, it's a year crew. Got Commander Mott, Ensign Calloway. All right. Let's resume. Oh, it's slow. Inspect it. Time to go to the dentist. That's it. What I, oh, yeah. It works. Yep. Oh, I just got to keep the mouse in the... <laughs> it's like a mini game. Keep the mouse in... in it's kind of silly, but... Just keep the mouse in there. Yeah, blue, I think, is still medical. If memory serves, yep. But they switched the red and the gold. <laughs> And I think I just put my menu on the side of my <laughs> monitor. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, so click. Click that. Spin my mouse. And then down. <laughs> Pull it out. Okay. <laughs> All right, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Interesting control. Interesting controls, but if I didn't know have the hints there, I'd be stuck for an hour. W puts it back in. All right, so D key and the button. Is crank that. it. All right. Let 
yeah, the tap tapestry. Yeah, that was a classic when uh, Hugh sends Picard totally in the right. back. It changes the past when he doesn't get uh, stabbed playing uh, Dom Jot, if I recall. One of the better nice TNG work, episodes, yep. Nothing to it, Nilly. And not a moment too soon. The he did seem jealous, Steve, yeah. Like, now. Okay, follower and engineering. Yeah, the walking's kind of wonky, but oh, I can run. Oh, I can run, too. Let's run on over there. I could have inspected that stuff, but oh, it's all right. Let's keep going. Hey, you feel like you're on the ship. It's very cool. Whoop. Did I lose her? Yeah, different character now. I don't know if you playing two characters. Or... The new XO just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. Hanging upside down makes me queasy. We can handle we anything. Together, we can tackle anything he throws at us. May he's putting the moves on. Positively <laughs> contagious. <laughs> Brian, I think it's out for consoles now. I think it it was on PC like first, but before. I'm Lieutenant Commander Chova. pretty sure it came out for consoles. Yeah. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty officers Ed Salar. Oh, Vulcan. Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. But not Spock. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. It does look good spot, but yeah. I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Edsalar on repeated occasions. How about be wise ass to this guy? It's a Vulcan. So you're saying we're irreplaceable, Commander? That is one interpretation. Another would be that I would replace you if I could. You can interpret <laughs> as you see fit. <laughs> good answer, yep. So I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before <laughs> we go off duty? Thank you, JT, for that. Yep. PC, Xbox, Equip and PS5. Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. Oh, I get to go out into space. The precise nice. nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many Let's systems see. have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. Commander... If this energy storm is causing problems here at Space Dock, what does that say about what we're going to find when we head out there for real? Yeah, good Should question. Should we let this storm pass? Long-range sensors show that conditions will indeed be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. Thusly, we are taking all necessary precautions. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Commander Chovak. <laughs> That was a good scene, yeah. Some people see this Chova combo of Chipolta and Tuvok, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chovok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. Consequences be damned. It all comes down to us, Nilly. We're the ones who will get it ready. I know what we can do, but this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. Huh. Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. Let's uh, they better be ready. Yep. <laughs> Man, we've been through a whole hell of a lot as a crew. They're going to have to prove themselves before they're really one of us. Oh, well, it's Robert Picardo. Yeah, uh, you're right. Picardo, cool. Anyone could look serious in a clean uniform. Show me what you can do when everything's falling apart. Good point. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda. You weren't going to leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? 
We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. Let's see. Don't insult my ship for a joke. Yeah, they're friends. So. Don't talk badly about one of the best ships in all of Starfleet. We've rebuilt enough of her by now. She better be one of the best. We'll see about that. But I am glad to be here. Hey, Still lemon pie. Hell. Of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh yeah. See a bit, J. It's J. Kirk. Back yeah. to me now. Maybe Carter can wrestle up that bottle, and we can give you a proper welcome. Nice. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. And Joseph Dredd said, that Vulcan reminds me of the Vulcan command from Take Me Out to the Hollow Suite. <laughs> All right, so let's see. How do I get this to work here? Just click that. Oh, just hand it to her. You're basically watching a movie at this point, which is yeah, not a bad or an episode, uh, which is thanks. not bad. Uh, so but what's the word? Are there's no the uh, security rotation. Yep. Nothing big to do. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. See you on the other side. All right, let's see if it gives us the same save game. Activating magnetic souls. Oh. Funk. Let's see. I gotta move the mouse there. Oh, that's what happens when you're not full screen. Thunk, thunk. Star Trek Six. <laughs> Let's go for a cruise <laughs> or a spin. <laughs> never gets old let's go that's gotta be pretty cool right someday someone will be walking on a starship <laughs> and first contact too yep that's right <laughs> i'm gonna get to walk on the outside of the, the enterprise d the resolute oh, this looks pretty good I mean, it's obviously cartoony, but it's uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Captain Solano should be here momentarily. So we're switching characters. Yep. Let's see, is there a way to save the game? Let's see here. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Doridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. Uh-oh. And we have plenty of Doridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Doridium. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the replicator. Pizza. Clam pizza. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> All right. Remember to keep eyes on the hull, otherwise SpaceX and no one will ever want to use that spacesuit again. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, can, I guess I can just walk around here. All right. Let's see. Anything to inspect? Can I use the replicator? Use replicator. Just Let's a see. What sip do we want? Something. Rectigino. Why not? Decisions. Decisions. Rectigino. That'd be so nice to have at home. <laughs> Wagner says that sounded like foreshadowing. Yeah, it did. Yeah, something's going to happen. Sure has a kick. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee <Jara> gone. Rydeck. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrot Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. Well, I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. My only regret is 
but we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The yeah, they didn't give me that the choice for Rama now. Her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. That's just let's just get to work. I'm gonna be a whiny. Spare me the pomp and circumstance. There's plenty of work to be done without all that. You always had a work ethic like nothing I'd ever seen. That's just what this ship needs at the moment. Hey, it's J. Jonah Jameson. As I'm sure you've yeah. heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. All right, let's see. I don't know the details. Let's see what he tells us. You'll have to forgive me. I don't really know the details. Although you should, as Star coming in from has first been officer. Kind enough to keep the story contained, probably because they want to protect me. But I don't mind telling you. Uh oh, what we happened? We're on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough, a quantum leap forward in warp core technology, ten thousand teradynes per second, the ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. Transwarp drive. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there, within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system. That won't crawl in on this cause us. Way yeah. beyond what the ship Or Omni Man, yeah. <laughs> it was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make, and I have to live with the consequences. Let's see. The crew knew the risks. Huh? We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees, as much as we tell ourselves otherwise. True. But as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I failed. In my defense, I will say might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was huh. a lot of pushback from my former XO. I, I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Hey, Dave C. <laughs> playing that, uh, playing star, new work. Star Trek game, yep. And that's Let's when see. things start to go sideways. Let's see. You can count on me. You can roll on me. Yep. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. And Howard Stark, yeah. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting right, here a senior we go. diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission. I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. Yeah, why would they have a small ship this do that? This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details of the rendezvous. All right, let's see. Who is this diplomat, I think? Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? That I don't know. <laughs> Greg, this is Sam Elliott should be playing the captain, yeah. <laughs> I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, 
then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying. You have my full support. It's been a dream of mine since before I can remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. That was a good scene. I guess I gotta follow, right? <laughs> I wonder if I went to the bar, what would happen? But all right, let's. Uh... All right, we got a next gen uh... Uh, bridge. Pretty close to the D, it looks like. It's a little smaller, maybe, but. Everyone, if I could have your attention for a moment, I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydek. <laughs> I'll be taking officer. your seat, first man. <laughs> Old man. <laughs> Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility, <laughs> he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure, you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Hey, JT. <laughs> Commander Rydak, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian, who's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time. That's kind of weird. And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. Yeah, you, you've heard of me? Yeah, that's... Uh, that's us uh, dude, that's very kind. Uh, honor's mine, honor's mine. All right. If anything, the honor is mine. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed we your found career out anyway. is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome, Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I guess we'll find out, yeah. Really admire that. So, you've been something. <laughs> That's of an true, Gwagnar. Yeah, we can see the bridge, you've actually. Not that I've done yeah. Anything close to what you've done. <laughs> yeah, this is a fangirl you stuff. You definitely set a standard to strive for. Yeah, <laughs> three enough about me. Yeah. That's very kind of you to say, but enough about me. We have a lot of work to do. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. And then, well, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. Okay. Please do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. Have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get Let's our steal authorization the ship. to get underway. <laughs> if they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. All right, I'm in charge. Sit in the captain's chair. Why not? Someone bring me a coffee. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He's sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. And something's going to happen, these guys, yep. We just need your go-ahead. What am I going to say, no? Mission granted. Lowering structural integrity field. We no. were, Entering we're docked, yep. Uh-oh, I hope. Blue. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> hopefully S-I-R-I or... Uh, Hey, Alex. <laughs> the echo was fun. Yeah. All right, storm, storm surge. Is getting worse. Can you save this? See if I can save this. I'll just do resume, but. Off the sif. Great. Let's get to that emitter. They're walking like Batman '66. <laughs> Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. Oh, oh Phantom says, yeah, main when menu might be where the save is. Yeah, I'll check I that next time. Right yeah. out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Cool. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? 
I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. Yeah. Of course I do. Of course yeah. I do. Starfleet's an open door. We just have to walk through it. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. And something's going to go wrong here. That's not predicting too much, but there hasn't been much action yet. So let's say D and then move to the right. And something's got to happen. W, pull it up. I guess they're going to show you what all the prompts are throughout the game. Hit pick up calibration tool. We just had to click. Yep. Getting recalibration. Two notes the center of the indicator. So how do I do that? Careful. Too much action and harmonics will deflect the alignment. I guess I got to get this to the metal somehow. Oh. Getting there. Well, I guess you just got close Let's enough. Go yep. That wasn't so hard. <laughs> How does he look at the sky no one's ever seen? I mean, does he intend to eliminate any landing party? I guess it meant that uh, Commander Westbrook, right? He's never Chief seen, right? Yeah. <laughs> you remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Well, this guy's pretty dour. Yes, I'm the chief science officer. And I have the dubious All honor right. of being the most senior officer on this bridge. Oh, well, I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. <laughs> That's impressive. Oh, Kyle, they were. Ah, what? Some of the f a very f off. impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. Huh. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would hmm. happen then? Oh, was that a ring telling her she needs? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. This guy's an a-hole. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario, but not outside the realm of possibility. Tell him to F off. That's eh? very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being, but you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned, just curious, that's all. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. Hmm. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. Do you have a problem? Try getting to know me. I can never. What do you think here, guy? I'll let you choose one, two, or three. I think three, maybe. Tell him to F off, but uh, I could never fill him shoes and trigger. Those are safe ones, but. All right, we got a never fill from Phantom. Let's see if anyone else says. Put a one, two, or three in the chat <laughs> if you want. We got a three. We got a one and a three. We need a tiebreaker, I guess.
And we got a three from JT Kirk. All right, I'll give everyone a couple more seconds. <laughs> you can only be yourself unless you can be Batman, then be Batman. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got three threes, so let's let's go with uh let's go with the three. Dress them down. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Yeah. Westbrook, if you have some kind of problem with me and you just met me so it has nothing to do with me, you're gonna have to figure out how to get over it. Because I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere. Do you read me? Loud and clear. I'll stick to science. That is what this ship is for. Very well. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the star base, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, mm. if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. So it's going to affect the, the uh, bridge crew, of course. Yep. Yep. The Wagner says some big components lack of manual saves. Yep. Wave inbound on screen. I don't know if the game automatically updates either, but maybe it did. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase right at us. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Estimated time to. Red right alert. Aye. <laughs> Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct yeah, hit. Toast. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can, we can I need warp drive in a minute, levels. mister. We're gone. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. What do you think, That's guys? Right. One or two. Which I'm going with two. We need to send power to our shields. Well, you don't get that choice, so yeah. So shields up or defector pulse. I'm, I'm going with, I think, two. I don't think, would the heavy get <laughs> die this early in the game? Yeah, shields up for, yep. Says Phantom. New new review says uh, still auto save only. <laughs> that stinks. Shield. Okay, let's go with the shield. Shields. Up. Let's try it. Hopefully, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Oh, W. <laughs> go forward. Heading locked. Raise shields. You think the space station would have shields too? This is it. All hands, brace for impact. Let's see if we're toast. experienced a surge of radiation oh you don't say this radiation supercharged the plasma <laughs> yeah. forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance uh -oh. blow out every primary system on the ship just tell us where you need us i need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator can't we do that from the inside yeah shouldn't they have been the chumps on the hull back into the ship <laughs> I guess they figured they were safe out there, the right? Well, that's what they signed up signed Understood. up for. Do you see the override for the level one fail safe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown.
I'm glad they tell you what to do with this, yeah. Yeah, they had access to themselves in TNG, I think, yeah. Just beam us there, yeah. Oh, I gotta do this now. Let's see, D, go to the right. That's kind of cute the way right they do the switches, yeah. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. They're telling you what to do, so there's no... No challenge here in terms of that. I'm trying to figure it out. Dears to Resolute, the fail-safes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. That sounds safe. Fail-safes are disabled. <laughs> Anyone going to call OSHA? Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm going to try to disrupt it with my phaser. One to equip phaser. There we go. Oh, just like Fortnite. <laughs> Holster. So we gotta climb up the pylon. Why'd you give me a, a phaser on a, on a mission on the ship's hull? You know. But <laughs> oh. I guess this is a way just to teach you how to aim and shoot your phaser. <laughs> At the space station. <laughs> I guess you got to keep walking too at the same time, probably. The right, right mouse. Ooh, shot my buddy. I guess you have unlimited ammo. That one's right on me. Oh, oh, I got toasted. Are you all right? Yeah. Still took most of it. it. Just snuck up on me. That damaged your suit. Energy dampening is down to sixty percent. Oh. Guess you gotta keep, just keep moving too, probably. Yeah, they don't know they're not life forms, but <laughs> but <laughs> fire away. We're almost to the regulator. Oh, that came right on me. He'll be mostly dead. I gotta change this game set into full screen. Man, not as easy as it looked, but I guess I probably should have kept walking the whole time. I don't know what's gonna happen. She's gonna. We're at the regulator point. <laughs> hey, what are these tempest rejects? <laughs> Now halting the EPS flow to the port nacelle, we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. <laughs> I'll try to work inefficiently. Vulcans can be annoying, right? <laughs> He 
The All right. Manifold adjusters reset to neutral. I guess you can just move him to the right here. Oops. <laughs> Obviously, you got to make him line up. Is that right? This ship is a hand crank to start it. Yeah, maybe 1950 car parts. Yep. Yeah. Like, there's got to be a way. I guess you must get the sine waves to line up exactly. There's only three positions, so. Well, maybe you do something like that and then. Yeah, because you only go. Let's see, can I get the... Like that, because the yellow one go all the way over? Let's see. Oh, I found my Vulcan science test. Let's see. The EPS lines oh, I did it. Engine are back in balance. Don't ask me how. I didn't have the manual. Uh oh. Trouble in River City. That doesn't look good. Captain's going to get killed. I tried that. Let me try, okay. Get down! Dears to bridge. We just lost the docking clan. Of course, yep. Yeah, how do you feel? We've question. Got a lot yeah. of debris coming down. All vibrations too. We can't finish the EPS regulation in these conditions. Please advise. Yeah, you come out here and do we it. We have to release the ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? It's FUBAR. What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's Beam another. Beam Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute. Yeah. The remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. We have crew outside and are looking and for the we safest have people way. people to... on this station. If that mooring arm breaks, we could lose dozens of crew. Yeah, start this is completely crap. Hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps and repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Gara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. I better, yeah. The captain made himself quite clear. They're going to get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. Well, it's easy to reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? Our base stand. We're going to flip whole polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. 
Oh, now I guess he's mad at us. Yep. But red means he hates. Yeah. Beam them in full. This is acting yeah. Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking. Well, they should have Tether suits that could uh, activate your boots on my mark. Understood. They could fly, right? With the I guess there's no jetpacks. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One mark. I, think I got it just in time. Grab my hand. I got you. Why is she still sticking to the to the ship? The plasma imbalance is reaching critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. I want your help. That doesn't look good. Yeah, an XO one of a hand crank to you. Let's see, W key. <laughs> Basically, you're just moving the mouse to get the stuff to work. Yep. It's about time she helped with the crank. Yes. <laughs> uh oh. Look out! She. I got you. She's messed Petty up. Officer yep. Ensilar's hurt and unconscious. Beam her in. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now. Of course, she doesn't weigh anything. Well, I guess I can't go that way now. Well. I'm at the auxiliary hatch. I should have explained that they can't use the transporters because the storm or something. That's really all you. That's all you need in one line. Yep. Hey, Dave C. Starting a new movie. It's called The Exorcism. Dave C.'s phone hotspot. Hello. Let me save your neck this time. No, she's gonna die. Obviously. Ladies first. Come no on. Time to fight me on this. Get in there. Not on your life. Let's not let it come down to that. Now I'm toast. I guess I was too slow there. We made it. They're safe. Bringing the Sith fully online. Oh, I made it? I guess I thought Do it was it. toasted there. All right, the price of it now, can I save it or? Let's see what happens really? here. I'm good. Help me with him. Oh, Let's he's dead. Oh, 
Mostly dead. Good. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. What's taking you so long? Get there. You don't look so good. <laughs> you gotta be more careful. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sick bay. Great. At least they have the love bed. Yeah, that's cool. That should give me a chance to save now, you would think. He's Venom now, yeah. Parker! Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. Hey, Godzilla. It says, yeah, not my star's brain, so it's Sith, not Sif. Yep. He's gonna, she's going to get chewed out now. So I do anything? Oh, it's just Jam Jamison's pissed off. You disobeyed my orders. Well, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for that, Captain. I you did what disobeyed I thought was... my orders, and not just in front of the bridge crew, but the starbase staff as well. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished. This guy's all unsettled. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom, bridge to lower decks. Captain, I told you I'd be honest, so here it is. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order, but you were wrong. You weren't on board and you didn't have all the information, so I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put yeah. your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. Huh. I guess we all are. And if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know. You weren't in those shoes so let's just boil it down to you did what you had to that'll have to be good enough for me thank you for understanding sir i'm sure no one knows the burden of command as well as you do i'm sure <laughs> you will someday what you just did <laughs> she didn't make the choice Despite it all we got our final starfleet clearance to depart so if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. <laughs> yes, sir. Wagner says, you're too distracted around that editorial against Spider-Man. <laughs> right now, can I save it? Or I'm just going to try to go back to the main menu, I guess, after this cut screen. The ship, well, the hull looks great from the saucer section, but it's not much from that angle. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. You guys think it's auto saving? Okay, so thanks. Yeah. A drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. They don't always do that, Sit. do they? Sit, <laughs> or maybe when, maybe when you're leaving for the mission, probably. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're so I'll give on one the now. First mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. I thought they weren't get disengaged. <laughs> they had new ones. Docking clamps released. Rusters ahead, Mr. Handar.
detached in the cells. No, just kidding. <laughs> now we're getting some good uh, classic Trek music. And I got the volume turned way down, so hopefully it doesn't nuke the stream. Oh, that was only a few seconds. Oh, that looks pretty. That should do it. Set a course for the Hotari system. Prepare to go to warp eight. I can try to go to warp one first. You know what? You take this one. Me? Oh, just have to do this. Make way. Yeah, make way. Helm. Make way. We gotta say engage. Oh, Godzilla, don't worry about that. I saw you pop in the chat. No worries. Sam. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us, Sam. Make way. It's a sailing term. I know that. I know that. <laughs> Let's sit my ass down here. Bring me some coffee. Oh. Easy. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I. Uh, uh oh. You don't look so good. Was that my Green Lantern power ring? I have to get to sick bay. Go. So he's a transfusion, yeah. Commander. You'd think you would have checked the ring earlier. The ring would have a monitor that would warn you. I guess it's supposed to be like uh, yeah, Red Lantern. It's supposed to be uh, like diabetes, I guess. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenues on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first well, things I've seen. She's a torture machino. <laughs> My name is Doctor Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. You'll we'll be seeing a lot of me. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare. I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. That's who I am. It's not an honor. I know what it means. And I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Hmm. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed. Interesting sharing all this. The pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What oversharing we just met. <laughs> what concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. The breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. The more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. Hmm. He's learned his lesson. I won't let that happen. Ambition. No He's risk, no reward. Before. I like the no risk, no reward. She's sharing too much here. We all have to chase our dreams, don't we? 
We need to take some risks. Isn't that? And why that's a classic Sadly? Kirk speech, right? But not at the about taking risks. Other people's lives. It's too high a price to pay. Risk is our business. I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took oh, she's pissed off. A direct order. I guess she's gray. That means. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. Sorry, Fanta. I wanted to go with the classic ship. JT uh, and everyone's Kirk. Uh, new <laughs> Fortunately, your answer, cell structure is yep. almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you: without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then my work here is done. Yeah, how the heck would you survive as a species? And J.T. Kirk says, good answer. Yeah. I came to see if you were okay. She's a little we too... We were all pretty uh, worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm about, please don't worry. I don't want anyone to worry. This is just part of who I am. It doesn't define me. Of course. I completely understand. Is and it a way on your turn? I would the same <laughs> way if I were you. You trusted me earlier with the shields. And I appreciated that. I she want you to know that I have your back. Brian, yeah. Thank you. Does she want more than her back? I don't know. Carter, the emissions that gave you that <laughs> burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. It's turned you into the human torch. That's the combination of hyronolin and electrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing about the scar <laughs> she's come by a couple of times to see you already be brief i don't know how many hours yeah yeah need an infusion every hour so it sounds like it's again. random depending on what you're doing i was starting to get worried not that you aren't in good hands with dr duvall you did Let's take see. one hell of a shot though can't get rid of me i can't get rid of me <laughs> come on you know you can't get rid of me that easy don't push me diaz you do not want to see me try. She's got no, something from nope. him. <laughs> I am not getting on your bad side. I am a formidable enemy. <laughs> Billy was looking in on you too, by the way. Yes, Steve. Yeah, the walking so in this game's not the best. Right yeah. I, I had a chance to think about this while I was away. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Or worse. All right, two or three, guys. Uh, so you can tell me anything. It's okay, Miranda. Say it, buddy. Maybe. Yeah. I know that. Well, then come on. Just spit it out. <laughs> I'm trying. Let me talk. The artifacts behind her hair is kind of weird. What I'm trying but, to say is, we've been really good friends for a long time. But I got back here and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. All right, let's go for it. She's a redhead. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. So, do you want to find out what that something is? Let's go for an anti-gravity spin. For you, and it's there for me. Why Absolutely. Let's go for it. Are you kidding me? I just said yes. <laughs> I wanted to be sure I heard that right. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> oh, now she's green. Toys. Okay, so it's green. And showing that. Back to his old self. Good, yeah. Of course. I'll see you again soon. I guess we're not going to get that scene from Yellowstone where the guy that broke his back and the girl <laughs> gave him some extracurricular help in the emergency room while well, they had a broken bat, but back. She arrived and already working a date. Yeah. Well, I think they knew each other. They had, they had a history. Uh, they explained when they first met. I don't know if you saw that part, Steve. Yep. Okay, caster. So now it's got to be auto saving. That's got to be the auto save. All right, let's see. Let's go see if I can go to. Oh, so does it show you what the people? Okay, orange, orange. Does it show you? I guess it tells you about the crew and Jared Carter. Who's? Okay, those are different characters. Yep. All right, so let's see if I go main menu, what happens here. Maybe I can. 
I don't want to exit the game. Let's see. I'm going to try yes. Hopefully, it's going to give me a chance to save it. I hope I didn't. Well, that was pretty bad if it did that. Let's see settings. Let's do full screen. Except now let's do play. Yeah, so I can't go back to the, the play. Better. Oh, oh. Well, I hope that's not that far back. Let's see here. Continue. I think that's right. <laughs> that's pretty scary. It doesn't tell. Point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us I should out of tell you, like, impulse. not saved or what it saved or. That's Ionic crazy. Interference surging, Captain. That wasn't good. Holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydek, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. I Let's guess you just have to noise. wait till you get to the Filter end of the story to signals. I can when it gives you the title screen. For Federation signal types. So I just spin the spin the mouse. What do I do here? I thought you said lower decks, not lower decks. <laughs> I just keep spinning the mouse around. You got to be kidding me! I'm gonna get dizzy. That's all I do? Oh, you gotta move like your hand and make a circle, <laughs> like spin a circle around. That's ridiculous. I've located <laughs> the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. That was pretty silly, but. Shuttle to resolute. <laughs> shuttle to resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. I can't get it any clearer. Beam her in. We won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Uh, you sure? I've had a bad sure. day. <laughs> USS Excelsior? Come on, Diaz. <laughs> it's Stan Lee's ship. <laughs> First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. Oh. Isn't there any USS Excelsior guys or <laughs> in Kirk's era? We're pulling in uh -oh. debris. I'm on it. Come on, I'm running out of mass pad area. <laughs> click, click, click. Come on, that's not let me do it. Uh oh, that doesn't that's look good. The shuttle. Here's Boy, the it wouldn't let me deflect. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Rydek, plot an intercept course. On it. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Does USS Excelsior have shuttlecraft called? Enough said. A true believer. Yep. Oof. Got it. Ouch. 
Whoa! Someone's working hard on the bridge. Yeah, put your hand up to stop that. Yeah. <laughs> Playing asteroids. <laughs> this game's been pretty fun so far. It's basically an adventure game where you're not doing much, I guess, in terms of your just your choices, I guess. But Good job. we're on our way down to meet them. So I guess that's a save there. I assume it's a save. I don't know. What? Terraforma, so to speak. No spot. way. All right, that's cool. And it sounds like his voice, too. Do they? How the heck are they doing Nimoy's voice? The captain will be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. All right, well, it's not Nimoy, but it sounds a little bit like him. I just wonder if they sampled his voice and... Uh, Recreated it. Let's do sorry for the rough landing. <laughs> I've had worse. The landing, Ambassador. I was operating the tractor beam, sir. I take responsibility. The craft suffered a few collisions, but I believe the saying is it will buff out. <laughs> we thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space. But it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. Hmm. What do you make of that? Rub it out. <laughs> when all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. <laughs> if this is Mr. Spock, I'm going to give Mr. Spock a suggestion. I'm going to say probably the storm. <laughs> well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems. Who knows what it might do to a warp drive? Yes. It would seem further investigation is called for. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer. Uh... Carter Diaz, sir. Thank you. And once in a while, a few words Spock. sound like Spock, but excuse me, I'm it is kind of weird to see. I'd like to get right see to see Nimoy without line. a voice, yep, or Spock without the voice, yep. I mean, he's got to be a legend in this <laughs> for these guys. Yep. I wonder what the time period is. Is this after TNG or before? I don't know. All right, so then this has got to be an autosave here. Phrasing says Sergeant My senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. <laughs> You're right, Ambassador. <laughs> not the most diplomatic choice of words. Let's see. But you are a legend, so I'd be sad if I was there. But uh, we need your experience. How about your that? Your experience comes from the past. But our present situation calls for it. True enough. There we go. We're hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Thank you. 
Olydia and Hotari. The Olydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olydians have shared a mining operation there. The Olydians Not anymore, I guess, the right? technological resources while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations hmm. and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari. Something's going on. Requested Federation mediation, but the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. Hmm. The, oh, I saw uh, Spock said you honor me. Yeah, I guess Spock would say that. Yep. Let's see. Have they? I'd say have they retaliated? Hmm. Have the Elidians retaliated against the Hotari? Or taken any action against them surprisingly they have not yet responded in kind they were open to a federation presence but it is unlikely the relatively primitive hotari forces would stand a chance against the Lydian fleet in open war left unchecked this conflict will result in more bloodshed which is what we are here to prevent and the dilithium trade hangs in the balance Clearly, the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. That is correct. They'd still be exploited. <laughs> I agree with Solano. No, but they don't want peace. Let's try the that. The Hotari just won their independence. It's hard to believe they would give that up just for profit. I agree. It would be exceedingly difficult to bring the Hotari to that position. Neither the Elidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There Good night, Dred. Yep. Thanks for hanging with us. Yep. Complicating factor, I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Elidians as a source of ah, source of the spice. That certainly changes things. Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. So I guess we're culpable. <laughs> we won't be trusted. <laughs> this gives us leverage. We could use that as leverage with the Elidians. They'll want the Federation to continue buying from them. There might be something to that, Commander. Putting that yeah. on the table could make the Hotari more hostile. Given the Federation's involvement in the Elidium well, Spock likes trade, it. Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Elidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Good point. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. But they have never been observed on the orders of magnitude we have seen in recent weeks. It's a perfect storm. That which is a great book by Sebastian the Younger, able to strike back after by the so way. Long. And that George Clooney movie, yeah, they the book is better. Opportunity and they took That's pretty usual. <laughs> that would also explain the Elidian's restraint. And reason to learn as much about the energy anomaly as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught at a disadvantage of yeah. our own. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Hi, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. Live long and prosper. <laughs> if I could get back I to StreamYard, I'd play some privately. stuff. <laughs> play some clips, but... Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander... As you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity. 
as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, mm, what do you suggest officer, then, Spock? for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Maybe that helps in this case. It would be whatever it takes. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy to work outside the lines. Hey, Clapper Times is here. How's it going, buddy? Duty commander. Just not too far outside the lines. We got Spock, but not Spock. But at well, least it I looks like commander Spock. Rydeck will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. Dun, 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 dun. So I guess that's autosave in there, hip. So this is uh, TNG, I guess after TNG here, I'm assuming uh, we're clobbering times. So far, thankfully no discovery stuff. <laughs> Oh, is she going to be jealous? Uh-oh. I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock. I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with this no shuttle ego to as bruise. if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with <laughs> Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. I am not the chief engineer of this shuttlecraft. <laughs> Let's see, do you enjoy anything? <laughs> Commander Chova, is there anything you do enjoy? I take pleasure in the satisfaction of a job well done. I suggest you try it sometime. Ouch. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. Was that a joke? No. Uh, couldn't have been. Have been. It seems like he's warming up to us. Oh, yeah. now he's angry at us. Yeah. Even Chobok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right to make me go first. I don't know what I was thinking. You did the smart thing. You've pulled me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. That'll buff out of okay. his face. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of sorry and brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. All right, so what do I do here? Computer. So, I know about your talk with Miranda. Ah, oh, she's jealous. You do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you. Both of you. Thanks. But I'm only going to tell you this once. You Don't could have had me. screw this up. <laughs> because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because we throw south up? and you're not on <laughs> speaking terms. That just isn't going to work for me. Have some faith. And I know you'll respect that. You really don't believe in me, huh? It's not you or her. Just running the numbers and things don't work out more often than they do. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done? Yeah, yeah it's wrapping up. Let's see. <laughs> the relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Let's see. Oh. 
Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. I hate it when that They're happens. The shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. Subspace variants out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. But if they it was didn't. caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. And they're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp hmm. cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. Let's do the warp coils. Yep. I'll check the nacelles for a cracked coil. Stay away. We've got Xenomorphs here. <laughs> yeah. Your tricorder can record and analyze data. Look at the reveal of the unseen. You still equip your holster, your tricorder. Oh, clobber times is here. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hey, hey you hear me? Yep, we hear you good. Yep, yep. How's I'm it sorry. going? Okay, go. Hang on a second. Yep. Man, I forgot to plug up my name. Oh, wait. Yep. There you are. I can't believe I did it. You got it? Yep. Yeah, what's so up? Good. Just just no, no, say hi. Yep, thank you for popping in. Yep. So just yeah. uh just Chilling. watching uh just playing this game. Yep. It's pretty good so far, I have to say. Playing it or watching? Not, uh well I'm playing it, but there's not a lot to not a lot to do. So now I've got to holster my holster my tricorder and scan the glowing objects. It's basically like an event old time adventure game where you you're doing minimal things, but you're basically watching the story. So let's see if I'm, I'm scanning. That's I can cool. scan now. So let's see. I'm trying to find. Oh, you center that? Let's see. Is that? It looks like real track. Oh, yeah. No, it's real. Seems like real. Tr oh, here are the warp coils. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know what time period, but it's definitely no. <laughs> there's no J.J. Abrams stuff or it's just Spock is older. Let's see. Do I. Out of range. Let's see. Am I supposed to walk forward here? It looks like TNG universe. No. Yeah. So it's. Let's see now. If that. Oh. Oh yeah. I was too far. Yep. During a deep scan, use Q and E to switch between different scan modes to search for glowing objects. Okay. So Q and E. Q and E. Yep. When you scan all objects. Change color and hold the right mouse button. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so Q and E. Three anomalies detected. <laughs> Radiation <laughs> scan mode. <laughs> wow, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That was a cool. No, I'm <clears throat> first chance to eat all day, so sorry I'm sneaking. Oh, a eat bit. away. Eat away. <laughs> a little bit. But I wanted to come say thanks for helping out earlier. Oh, no problem. Glad to glad to help when I can. Yep, yep. Now, if I can only figure this out, zero oh, anomaly target. Now I do the right mouse button, right? Let's see. E key. Let's see. Do I do E? Q anomaly detected target. Oh, target it. Left mouse button. Oh, now it's telling what what happens. Okay.
Uh huh. When was this made? Coils show evidence of routine maintenance of paramicrobrasion from neutrino interactions. Yep. <laughs> also, now maybe a different mode here. All anomalies detected. Static field. And their standby rate warp coils produce a residual electromagnetic field. No anomalies detect detected. Let's see. So that. Wow, that was tough. <laughs> I checked every coil on the port and the cell for imbalances. If any coil in either engine were cracked, I would have detected it. So it must be the navigation array. Yeah, so you're basically Except in a story it's here. Not checked mm -hmm. and double checked. Well, well, the response to why. No, you're in like a smaller uh, engineering uh, scientific class ship, and JT Kirk told us the name of the class before, and I can't remember it already. I think if yeah, you remember, didn't you, have, didn't you have Ambassador Spock? Yeah, Ambassador Spock was hey. here. Yeah, he's still on the ship, but it's not Nimoy's <laughs> voice. I was wondering if they would have. Uh, uh, we're escorting the negotiating team uh, to the surface. You know, as cloned as his voice, but they didn't. And oh, I, I made I the moves on the cute redhead. He had a choice mm -hmm. to like be a friend or make the moves, so I made the I moves. Go. Yep. Nice. The captain <laughs> and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Always time for you, right? Come, Come on, on. I'm never too busy to make time for you. That's <laughs> not true. <laughs> no. But I am glad you came by. So you no, he was outside the ship and got. Almost uh, blew, blown ball. away and got zapped by radiation. Hey, Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? <laughs> and you're the favorite. always make the moves on the redhead. <laughs> right. All aboard for Hotari. That another one of the captain's railroad things. Tell it to you, G. <laughs> Gotta be. Yep. <laughs> I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Catch y'all later. <laughs> Yeah, but so far it's been pretty uh yeah. it's been pretty pretty good, train. I think. Yeah. I do have to go. Uh oh, make your move. Kiss. Not gonna lie. I kiss her. What do you think, guys? Right One, two, or three. Kiss the girl. More important. Wait, kiss the girl. Mind. Three, yep, three. Yep. Go for it, yep. Of course, uh, the Little Mermaid is streaming now on D Disney Plus. Remember that song, Kiss the Girl? I think they changed the words or to take it out. Yep. That was nice. Yeah, it was. Save we just need Raquel to <laughs> complain about the kiss. Mm. The... You got a deal. <laughs> the closed mouth kiss. What would she, she say when, when Nana Visitor was uh, kissing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Definitely around... Um... Era. Yep. And she's a prisoner the, the, fan too. Yes. She said, "Be seeing you." If you can go back down to reality, the, the million more. Yep. All right. Where were we? So the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. No, she's making the moves on him, too. <laughs> okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double-check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Oops, so I gotta do the D key here. It's super simple stuff here. I think it's mostly how you interact with the crew that changes the, the game. Warp field inversion and the cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. 
That's not Build compute. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure returned non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. And that doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. He's going to blow up the ship. Static field intensity, warp 1.1, 1.2, 1. 1. 3. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapse. Does not compute. Does not compute. <laughs> Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. What -o? The same moment <laughs> the shuttle failed to warp, yeah. so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. <laughs> There's, well, the, these two planets are fighting over dilithium moon. So one species is not as technologically advanced as the other. But they had an agreement to the more advanced species, I guess, gave them technology to mine the moon. So they're both both getting a piece of the action, but they're they're yeah. fighting now. So Spock is trying to reach an agreement because the Federation needs the dilithium crystals from this moon. All right, so I guess it auto saves every. We'll do one more chapter, I think. So you must. Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you. It's must be after unification. I was Hotaris, Minister. Yeah, of it's got to be after unification. Yeah. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara. Ryder, I'm assuming it's after. Uh, aboard the USS Resolute. TNG's five-year mission. Find she has a keen mind. <laughs> and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Lydians. Yeah, we're honored to meet, be here, I guess. That's yeah, pretty we're neutral. We're honored to be here as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad. These must be the representatives of the mighty Federation. Uh-oh. The reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But Those guys are pretty big. Way, we're grateful you've made yep. the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. It's got a th thing forehead. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then these must be the more advanced species, I'm guessing. Let's hope mm -hmm. this is the last yep. time we ever have to come here. Because they're skinnier. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> What about you? Oh, they can use impulse, RJ Godzilla. They just can't get to I think reach to warp, begin. I guess, with this storm going on. But take a long way to get home. That guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. Let's see. Two or three. Let's three. See. Three? That Not may fair. be true. But let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully he's just one voice amongst many. Yeah, we got Spock here. What do we have to worry about? Oh, that would impress Spock. As their guests. So we must show them the proper respect. I figure she would impress Spock with that. Yep. Yeah, it's all about how the different interactions, I think, yeah, with the characters. We like scrolls a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Show deference. Yeah, show deference or strength. I have no idea. What do you think? Mm. Strength. Well, we'll find out if that worked. Ambassador Spock, 
Welcome to Holtari Pride. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elidian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains <laughs> neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind. Oh, I guess I can look around the room. <laughs> I thought oh, yeah. you wanted us here. Let's see. She's tough. We're not liked. Not now. I guess that she's tough, maybe? Yeah. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? How do you know she's that? Part... She can speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Uh-oh. Yeah, Godzilla, yeah, this game is well shot and directed. It looks does look good, yep. It's basically a mini mini episode or movie, I guess. This, so, this is new? It's, yeah, well, a couple months old, I think. Uh -huh. Re relatively new. You get it for PlayStation and uh, Xbox, too, now. Now then, one should know their place. What you might be somewhere else is not what you are here. Which is standing before a queen and a queen deserves respect a bow is not too much to oh i pass. should have bowed before is hotari prime heart of the hotari system let's see i don't know your customs eh? Three. <laughs> i am unfamiliar with your customs your Majesty. We may not be a powerful civilization in your eyes, but we are prideful people. You are Kobliard. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands oh, of the there Kardashians. Go, Kardashians. Their injustice mm -hmm. towards the Kobliard is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. So you don't know what not her condition is, but she needs a transfusion. By the Every once in a while. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Elidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobiard suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. This is a big question here. <laughs> I would right um, the wrong. I would seek peace. It's can't speculate. Well, if you're an, amba if you're an ambassador here. Two. Yeah. <laughs> two, yep. There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Fuck like that. Fuck, Mylon. You may be right. Unfortunately, that was not the case, was it? No, it was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The I'm not familiar with uh, Destiny 2, J.T. Kirk. Most advanced alliance in the galaxy. 
It's widely known we had an abundance of dilithium <clears throat> in our mines. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. Who, I guess, Dilithium is a factor? Yeah. Spock croaked. It's possible the Federation has an interest in both peace and securing a steady source of Dilithium. One does not preclude or prevent the other. But that's just my personal opinion. Given the Federation has done business with the Elidians for decades, I would agree. It's entirely possible, if not highly likely. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and oh, will no they longer Spock exist like without the a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies. Uh-oh. Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. Oh, tell me, who deserves uh -oh. control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? That's the name of the moon. <laughs> this is not going well. Who recognize the Hotari or the Alidians? Why don't we just kill you all and take the dilithium? What I gotta only be one or the other. Oh my Not god, we gotta choose both. her. <laughs> well, it's on Hotari Moon, so I guess I go with one. What do you think? Mm, yeah, this is if gonna be ugly. I have to choose only one, then it would have to be the Hotari. Well said. How could the just and wise Federation? Make this is any trouble other now. choice. <laughs> this is Kirk agrees. The Federation has lost all credibility. The mines are ours. Lydia will not be deterred. We will take back our mines by any means necessary. And you will see more blood spill. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well. Why wasn't Spock doing all that but speaking? I suggest <laughs> we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the yeah. most essential representatives. Why would they have let that commander make all <laughs> speak like that? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess you're uh, playing that. They didn't want you have it, doing that as Spock, though. Yeah. No. It look like some Martians from uh, Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we meet again. Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. It's been a pleasure, Commander Rydek. Uh oh. Hmm. Is she getting trouble? Happy. <laughs> I don't know. Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. Yeah, she's supposed to go we under. need to find out why the Hotari undercover. are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? They found something else, maybe? Mm. Go press Latinum. Yeah. <laughs> Speak with members of each faction, let's say. They can run. Let's see. What's this here? Hmm. Appreciate the water. Soothing. <laughs> Commander. God I'm is glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidians' baseless claims and protect hmm. the interests of my people. The Elidians are... Hey, Sean Carter's here. Hey, and Sean. What we... Sean. What would you do here? Two? 
three. I'm not either side. That's neutral. You've suffered enough. I don't know. I'd say either two or three, but mm. what do you think? One. One? Okay. Let's go with one. The Hotari have suffered enough at the hands of the Elidians. I couldn't agree more. You're trying to get information too, I guess, yeah. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized <clears throat> from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. Hmm. Did you have help? You were armed. I'd say one or three, right? Two doesn't make doesn't matter. No. Not really. So, so did you have help? The year before. Uh that what you're talking about. Uh thing before. I think with their title. Yeah. Was um well they were, she's trying to find out who's helping them, so maybe just oh, ask yeah. you, Jeff. Yeah, let's try one. Yep. And Sean Carter says he's pretty far in this game. Only grab his facial expression. Some of the characters always look like they're gonna cry. Some choices come tough choices coming. Yeah, what's well, <laughs> did you have help from someone else? Otari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. We don't need sticking badges, yep. <laughs> They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The hey, DJ Ronnie Jesus, I know a secret. <laughs> DJ. The talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend <laughs> with anything the Elidians might have in store. It's not a warship, it's a science ship, yep. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. Huh. <laughs> well, you don't want to say it's a science vessel. It can hold its own or three, I guess, right? I would say Resolute can hold its own. It's what? Ooh. Well, the ship can hold its own. That's the name of your ship, yeah. They're like, yeah, you don't want to say it's a science vessel. It's... And the fleet is always within reach, but I'm going to go with one, I think, there. Yep. And RJ Godzilla says, yeah, wouldn't it be Star Trek if there weren't tough choices to make? Yeah. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say the art, but the Resolute is plenty capable and can hold its own against just about anything. Survive the Dominion so. Wars, says DJ. Because at the moment, it's the only thing preventing them from wiping us off the map. Hmm. Sidra. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Sheet. Hmm. Huh. So let's see. What now I can go. <clears throat> what are they doing? Well, they're just talking. Let's see. They can walk around. I can talk to the, the queen here. Yeah, but let's talk. Commander Ryder. I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid what? of what might happen without your help. Uh. Let's see. Thank you, Ambassador Spock, I think, right? Yeah. The Lydians are wrong. Glad to hear that. Uh, Spock. <laughs> if anyone deserves thanks, it's Ambassador Spock. No one is more invested in negotiating a peaceful settlement to this conflict than he is. I'm so glad. We need his help before the situation escalates further than it already has. It's been very trying. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a minor, not a diplomat. <laughs> the first oh, time in our history, yeah. the Hatari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Galvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now they have the Queen's ear. For better or worse, depending on your perspective. Hmm. 
Hmm. You don't trust them. They took your place. They're against peace. <laughs> Shankar said the Hotari 2600. Yeah. And DJ, yeah, we did. He says, talk to everyone, even the, the waterfront. We did check the waterfront. I'll check it again, I guess. Yeah. Maybe uh, you don't trust them, maybe. But yeah, that's. That's. Yeah, let's try that, maybe. I get the sense you don't exactly. You're trying trust to get them. information here, so. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Elidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the night whenever they wanted to. Sorry. But it never no problem, happened. yep. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. Still Maybe the there's hoarder in there. Bravado you would expect from them. <laughs> but it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. <laughs> What do you think, Federation, the Iron Storm, or Galvan? What's Galvan? Was that one of the, the guys? The Irons. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, Galvan. Maybe Galvan. Then. Why would you try that? Right? Yeah. Because of what happened in the mines. Is it Galvan they're afraid of? Oh, that's a big guy. All right, yeah. It's entirely possible, but I don't know for sure. Whatever they're really, doing in those mines is. They really do look like scrolls. Marvel, do, yeah. Marvel, yeah. Uh, MCU scrolls. Yeah. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. Oh, so he took no charge. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. They've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. They strongly mm. suspect they're hiding something. Would we'll just be direct. What is it? To why would they do that? Are you sure of this? Three, maybe? Uh, okay, I'll try three, yeah. No, don't trust me. I don't know how to play this game. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's been talk of the palace since the day of the revolt. How can we know? Oh. I'd better see what's happening. Well, I mean, it's just a, it's not really a game. Do you like think a, you can find out what they're hiding? Yeah, from... You get to it's a more story, base. interactive story, yeah. Before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can <clears throat> use to capture whatever you find. You uh -huh. can send it to me. How are you going to know to use a tricorder? Hmm. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And... I look forward to our meeting again. Here's how to use it. But <laughs> I guess I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Now I got to talk to the bad guys. Notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured, in the interest of fairness, I should offer another perspective. Nah, you're too ugly. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality. As does any hope you might have for a supply of dilithium in the future. So why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. But clearly you weren't aware. Hmm. Dilithium isn't my concern. Rem remain neutral. The Hotari deserve control of the heart. That's uh, uh Hotari. Mm -hmm. That's siding too much with the Hotari. And you already said that Dilithium is part of it. Let's see. Yeah. I'll do two. We remain neutral, I think. Yeah. We are and will remain completely neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? Hmm. Major Solid <laughs> Arminta, Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. Look like Barjorans and Scrolls, Gene Spice, and Godzilla. <laughs> I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Citing an uprising the same day as a massive once in a lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. 
Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least that was what we were told. Hmm. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? Hmm. Sounds skeptical. I don't buy it. What really happened? What do you think? Uh, I think one or three. Hmm. Maybe just three. What really happened? Yeah. I'll just be direct. Yeah. Yeah. The best. Something tells me there's more to the story. So what really happened? Yeah. Mm. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mine? It was the chicken I've man. I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. Uh-huh. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. So let's see. That's impossible. That helps explain it. You said they were primitive. That's three primitive, maybe? <clears throat> let's see. That helps explain Yeah, three, it. probably, yes. Yeah, three, yeah. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. Yeah. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. I'll report your findings, okay. So I got to walk here, I guess. So let's check out the. I think we checked out everything. See, so where's the captain? That's a run. <laughs> oh, we already checked out the water, so I guess we don't have to do it again. It looks pretty good, the graphics, too. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Illidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. Uh-huh. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. I'm got a spy now. So, yeah. So I was muted. Um, some of the writing doesn't come off very Spock. Gravitational no, harmonics no. failing it's to not, resolve. But it's not new Trek bad, though. Increase yeah. output to maximum. Yeah, it was. Let's see. Oh, one, I pressed the one key here. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. They're doing the simulation, I guess. Okay. And that's not Spock, although it looks like Spock. It's another... Another Vulcan. It is evident that presently the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. We need to know more. Otherwise, it'll be an extended stay in the Hotari system. Might be the storm, I guess, right? Yeah. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chobach. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture <laughs> of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. All right, well, I think that's a good spot to uh, pause it. To be continued. I yeah, I think I think it's saved. Yeah, the scientific method was that the that looked pretty cool there. Uh, but I think yeah. it I think it auto saves. That's what everyone was saying in the chat that it. Uh, 
So if you press escape key here, let's I'm see. Setting up a waypoint at a so I think it's been saved now. So there's no there's no way to <laughs> there's no save here, I guess. Yeah. A tricorder phaser shot, all these are your commands. Let's see, but it doesn't tell you. <laughs> so I'm trying to see controls, your crew. These are the people in your crew, and it's Jar and Carter. I guess yep. it's not color coded. It doesn't tell you how they like you, but that's mm. who you're meeting. One of the guys looks uh, like Stan. Yeah. Jovac, yeah. Yeah. He looks he's Stan. So, Sean, oh, thank you, Sean Carter. Yeah, so it's saying uh, auto saves you see the title. Can't manually save. New title chapter auto saves. Yeah, okay. That's that's what. Thank you for that. Yeah, just don't, don't want to lose anything. Yeah, you sure you want to exit the game? But they should show you like saved or something, or that's uh, ridic ridiculous. Yeah. So uh, here, let me. Uh, let's see. Can I get? Let's see if I get back. I'm gonna stop. Uh, stop the sharing screen. Well, here I'll put us on. There we go, like that. And do. Stop screen. There we go. And egg exit. Yeah, this is no, the game was pretty good. I thought it was uh pretty darn yeah, well cool. done. Yeah, it's fun. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, that's cool. Played for a couple hours. I guess uh uh Sean is it Sean Sean's way into it. So how many hours do you think uh if you're you're pretty far into it? I played two hours tonight. Do you think it's uh like eight hours, twelve hours, you know, roughly of gameplay? I think it means you. Yeah, no. I think it means you, Sean. I think it was, yeah, yeah. So, Sean, yeah, he says, now I can go back to, I couldn't show the screen before, but. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Lemon Pie. Good to see you. So, yeah. So, no, it was, that was fun hanging out with everyone tonight. So, appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, since, cool. uh, since you couldn't uh, stream earlier, I figured, what the heck, I'll play Hell some yeah. Star Trek. Why not? Yep. <laughs> Good idea. Yep. Good idea. It's and, a cool game. And I clip some war game stuff, so <laughs> shall we play a game? Oh <laughs> <laughs> love it. So I got that title. <laughs> and then th this is a, a crazy clip. I don't know. He wasn't very old. Well, he was pretty old. He was forty one. Oh yeah? Oh that's old. <laughs> forty one, that's old, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. How about global thermonuclear war? <laughs> yeah. How about not? But no. yeah. <laughs> How about SCD instead? Yeah. Or not? How about not? Or not? Yep. Yep. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's get on out of here because it got late early. But yeah, I appreciate everyone hanging out and playing playing some uh, some Star Trek. Uh, so it's Star Trek Resurgence, and uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty good. I'll put the overlay on so we look we look pretty uh, going mm -hmm. out here. Now, well, of course, I got to play this. It's 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 clobbering time. It's a jeer here. Uh, thanks, dude. <laughs> thanks. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So yeah, so that's the game Star Trek uh, Resurgence, and yeah, so far, so far, so good. Let's see. Hopefully, it's worth the thirty bucks. But uh, so far, I think it's better than the last season of DS Nine. So, uh... oh yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that was a bit more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but what is it? What is yeah. it? So, but, uh, so, the, yeah, so far no Neil says Guagnar. So thank you, Guagnar, JT Kirk, Sean Connor, Jonah Hex, Lemon Pie, mm -hmm. who else was hanging it? And uh, RJ Godzilla, DJ Ronnie G. Uh, and who, uh, let's see, who uh, Dave was here before. Uh, hail to Dave, Simply Steve, uh, Judge Dredd was here, Fanty Outsider was here, and I think I got, I think I got everyone, and JP, yeah. Kirk, of course, yep, and Gragnar. <laughs> so, so thanks everyone. Uh, appreciate you hanging with us, and uh, we should be having on the clubhouse tomorrow night. And if I have time, I'll do. God, it's the last episode of UFO, so I hope I have uh, time oh, going out. Man. Six o'clock. Yeah, but it's the last episode. We could watch it again, but. Uh, 
Yeah, last last one for the review. Yep. Thank you, JT Kirk. Yep. Appreciate it. Says thank you for streaming this tonight. <laughs> thank you. Yep. And uh yeah, no Neil except <laughs> do I have the chicken man loaded up on my I don't know. I don't know. Do I have I might have it on the uh let's see if I switch to my uh DS9, let's see, uh do I have it under this one? Let's see the chicken man. Just here we go. Yep. <laughs> Draw that man in a chicken suit. <laughs> it's the chicken man. <laughs> there you go. Because I know you wanted to see that. <laughs> yeah. So uh <laughs> get some chicken man. Yep. <laughs> and Sean Carter. Yep. <laughs> Hail and good night. So uh it says uh, it's about four or five hours in. It feels like I'm about halfway through. All right, so that's not bad. Ten, about ten, ten to twelve hours of gaming. That's that's worth it. And it's really more like an interactive story. So, so far, yep. It's not doesn't seem like it's much of the way of you know. Have, have good reflexes. So I think this is a good game for uh, us older, above forty one uh, Star Trek fans <laughs> trying to play a game. So. <laughs> Yeah. All right, everyone. So let's uh, let's get on out of there and hopefully see you tomorrow. You guys all tomorrow down in the clubhouse and look for an announcement on uh, on uh, uh, UFO. The last episode, if we're going to do a live stream, but hopefully I'll be home in time for that. Uh, yeah, hopefully I will. Yep. Cool. All right. Night, Good night, everybody. everyone. Take care. Fun storm in the castle. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas. Half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. You're still here? It's over. Go home.